I'm loaded up with batteries today. Yeah, now we're rolling. Okay. Buka. Hey, Phil. <laughs> Welcome to your podcast. I know. Welcome to my podcast. It's everybody's podcast. Because I am going to take this and brand it on mine. Oh, nice. <laughs> no, I was talking because I forgot to push record and then we had a de- S- SD card error. <sighs> I know. Technology. What are we talking about? No, they got all these different podcasts. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. And so, so what are you doing? And then you started talking about Instagram, yeah, and yeah. that's what that's where we ended up. So first, but first we talked about, I talked about my podcast. You're rolling your podcast into one. So I'm doing the same with my Instagram. Too many Instagrams? Right. Well, no, I had, so I had these three podcasts, and they're all kind of categorized, and they each fit nicely into their own little theme. Right. But it's a nightmare doing three, being one guy doing three different things. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Well, this is my theory on that, is they need to earn splintering off, I think. There you go. Before they splinter off. So you're saying, yeah, they should have a spinoff. Yeah. yeah. If one particular... So yeah, I'm going to put everything in one bucket, and this is my friend series, and I'm not even going to call it a series, but you know, and honestly, I don't care... What people listening think anymore? You, just, you know, you can't just start a show and then next season you spin off seven people. <laughs> I mean, and maybe you can, but well, and of course, like Joe Rogan, who's turned out to be not my favorite person, but there's that, no, there's no Jamie podcast. There's Jamie podcast. There's no Jamie spin off. Is there? <laughs> uh, right, 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 right. There's no, no but my point is, is, you know, he's all over the place. Yeah, sort of. Sort of. I mean, he's tightened it up since he's got that hundred million from Spotify. But in in theory, like he's got his buddies that come on pretty regularly. But then he'll he'll get like a Neil deGrasse Tyson or. Well, he has three or four categories. He right. has MMA. Right. He has science. I know. He has comedy. And, and then he's got the 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 call it the life biohacking. Okay. I, I think I put that under science. Okay. Like um, when so he's eating meat for like... To me, to me, he has three. Okay. And that the MMA ones, which I... Yeah, I don't care for them. Yeah, so I just skip those. And Oh, you're I, still listening to him? Well, I, no. Um, <laughs> here's the thing. When he brought Alex Jones back, I'm like, I'm just done with it. I can't, no, I I was, can't do it. I was in until he went to Spotify. Oh, took the money? Not, not because of that, right. but because... Okay, all my podcasts are here. Now I got to go over to Spotify. Oh, just it's to an exclusive. To I can't. I can't just take them out off of Apple Podcasts. Not there anymore. So it's like a Howard Stern thing. Yes. When he went to 100%. Sirius, they're trying to get everyone over to Spotify. But oh, I can't. I'm not ready. I'm not going to do that. Well, here's the other problem. Do they have that many listeners? I guess they do. Spotify's this, huge. Here's the other burn. So I'm fine. Okay, I'll switch over and listen to Rogan. On my phone, where I listen to my podcast when I'm out on my run or whatever I'm doing. Right. I walk <laughs> fast. I, I switch over. This this can't this media can't be played. What? Yeah. Wait, what? Well, it took me a long time to figure it out. It's because I have a VPN on my phone. Who doesn't? And it won't go through that. It won't allow you. Wait, what? They, they want to get into your phone. Oh, they're like, yeah. If they, I can't dump a cookie on they, you. They can't ID you. <laughs> You can't listen. So, okay. We can't market you, basically. I, hey, I was going to listen to you. You're paying this guy, how much? hundred million? hundred million. For me to come listen to you. But now there's now there's a checklist? I oh, got thank the, God the thing's still recording. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I'm not. No, then. <laughs> I know. It's not. I'm not that interesting. Yeah, I'm not that and interested. you're taking three hours of my day that I wasn't even noticing. I know. That's the magic of it, isn't it? And now I can't believe how much time I have in the morning. <laughs> but now, no, it's, 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 I got sucked in. I was listening to everything science. Uh, no, science stuff's great. Yeah. And, the, and the comedians that I love, but just, you can't, you can't do science and Alex Jones. I'm, I'm sorry. When he brought Alex Jones back for the third or fourth time or whatever, I'm like, that's, I'm done. You know, uh, so I'm well aware of the Alex Jones controversies, right? But I've never actually listened to him talk. So, not only do I not exactly know what it's all about. You just skip that show. You're like, I don't like this guy or whatever. I'm just like, I don't. Yeah, this guy doesn't have something I need to know. Right. So I just skip. You know, sometimes I'll let those guys roll for 20 minutes or 10 minutes and just see if it. All right. If it's interesting. But he wasn't one of them. 
I guess I, I guess I'm uh, canceling it. Is that a thing? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now it's on a podcast. Well, but <laughs> <laughs> now he's no, definitely canceled. No, but I mean, it, it's funny. I hear, I, I lean left politics wise, but wait, did you hear about the great Spotify Alex Jones canceling of Joe Rogan? No. So he went over there, right? And they populated all Joe Rogan's catalog into Spotify, right? Except for the Alex Jones oh, episodes, of course, and a, and a couple others, right? And he's like, "What? What? What? No, that's not. That's not in the contract. That's not the deal." Rogan said that. Yeah. Oh, you got. You got to take everybody. Put them, yeah, and they're like, "No." And uh, there was, I don't know. A I think Spo- I think Spotify wins that one though. I don't. I don't think it was Spotify. I think it was, it was the the employees were in outrage, and the whoever signed up, Joe Rogan's like, "I didn't know." <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't but, know enough but about I it. But I guarantee you, just not being the amateur contract lawyer that I am, that there's a place in there that says, if there's something really bad, we can get out, you know? Maybe. I don't know. I, I feel like he was pretty diligent about making sure that there were... I'm going to have to find out now. There was no things. I mean, that's what he said. He said, I wasn't signing with anybody because I want it my way or, or forget it. Right. Because I don't need your money. Well, hundred million. I don't need the money either, but yeah. But but if I'm going to take your hundred million and be your guy, it's there's going to be no catches, right? You're going to make there's sure there's going to be a catch. There's always a catch. I don't well, care who you are. There's a catch. Everybody gets a catch. I don't, okay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, so back to so I'm gonna I'm gonna do one podcast and I'm gonna bucket it and Great. just and I'm not even gonna try to categorize it. I'm just gonna. Because you know what? Instead of trying to find the time to fit, like unions, for example, at an awesome union interview, but with COVID, it's hard to get around and talk to people. And it's an awesome episode. I mean, it's transcendent. It'll, anybody would be interested in it. And but, like Rogan, you can skip the MMA. Right. If you don't want to hear it. Yeah. And if people don't want to hear it, they just skip it. Yeah. And then I got you. You're awesome. Yeah. No one's skipping that. Do the friend one. <laughs> <laughs> right. But yeah, so I just do it all, put it in one thing. And if people don't like it, fucking who cares? Or so, if it's not in the right, you know, well, you said it's politics and culture and this is about, you know, equipment. Right. So, I, I thought about the same thing. And coincidentally, I ran into a YouTube guy who okay. was sort of newish. All right. And he was doing the same thing, but with one channel. He didn't try to splinter. Well, you and Instagram's the same deal. Well, so that's the thing. So this guy was doing one channel just all over the map. One topic he noticed. It hit. It caught. Analytics were spiking. Yeah, there you go. He's like, oh, I wasn't that interested in this thing, but I guess I know about it. So this is will be my thing now. Well, that's supply and demand, too. Yeah. The demand, you know, like if whatever, if people want more buka, I'll try to get you in every every couple of days. There you go. Yeah. Okay. If the analytics spike. I think I'm available. Yeah. So I'm doing the same thing. I bailed on, I mostly bailed on all my. Your life has several channels too, by the way. Too many channels. (laughs) I mostly bailed on everything. I'm back down to the one that works. Well, what were you doing on Instagram? Because every, every 10 minutes it's like bottle philosophy or I'm getting hit with some. Yeah. So here's the thing that happened with the coffee. And I'm like, who the hell is this guy? And then I'm like, oh, it's Buka. (laughs) (laughs) Just somebody <laughs> wants to friend me or whatever on Instagram. and uh, But your coffee thing was always huge. Yeah. Well, here's the funny thing. It was an experiment. Okay. I wanted, I was trying to learn how to do Instagram. Okay. So I picked a topic. That and, was coffee. And I hit it hard. I picked a topic I love. Right. Coffee, you, do, you do like coffee. And I hit it hard. I gave myself a year. Okay. And I did it for a year. It killed. I figured, I learned a ton about oh, you're Instagram. Like, this is easy. Sort of, yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> I'll start some different channels. <laughs> It'll be easy. Everything will happen just like this other one. And I walked away from coffee. Oh, I you mean, walked away? Coffee posts. Right. And I went to take that knowledge and try and do some other things. Well, they didn't really take off because I didn't have enough content because I don't do anything as much as I do coffee. <laughs> well, you're doing coffee every day. I knew that. And okay. And I didn't take that lesson with me, so that was a mistake. But what also what I also learned is... You can't walk away from your thing once you get it going, or you're going to start from scratch. So I can explain, start. Well, so yeah, I don't know what that means. Explain. So it. I start. I walked away from my personal Instagram to try and get niche Instagrams. 
and, right. and started kind of not posting on my Instagram. Oh, well, on your, on you Instagram. On my, yeah, my name. Yeah. Where I was doing the coffee. Right. So oh, you were doing the coffee on your name. Yeah. Oh, it wasn't branded. Gotcha. It wasn't a coffee branded. It was Instagram. you. You were the brand. Just on my regular thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's my experimental. Okay. It's me. Right. Just experimenting. Fine. So I stopped doing the coffee posts and very quickly. <laughs> I was like, those, who are these children? I want to see coffee. All those followers. Yeah. They just <laughs> not really paying attention. Are they bailed? Mo- most of them are still there. I still got a pretty oh, okay. big following, but it's well, pretty big. This throw number out there. 500. Oh no, it's in the thousands. Oh really? Oh yeah. You know, I'm about the thousands. <laughs> I'm all that's, about the thousands. Yeah, that's I'm right. About the thousands. We'll, get, we'll get there. Okay. It's in the thousands. It's, it's a nice number, but they're clearly not paying attention. They're there still. Oh, they're zombie followers. I can still get in their thread. Right. But they're, they're not, they're not, they're not commenting. Right. They're, they're not actively engaging. Engaging. Yeah, yeah. That's the word. So that's a problem. So I need to, I think the coffee Instagram is probably coming back because I enjoyed, <laughs> I felt popular. Well, well, that's the problem when you, when you, when you, you know, when you hit it the first time out, you know, yeah, it's you just swing at the first pitch. You're like, Oh, I can hit everything. Yeah. That, well, they say that viral videos, be careful about that viral video or that viral podcast because why is that one hit wonder or something? Yeah. Or you, or you start getting high on your own supply. It's better to have a slow growth and gain followers and well, you get loyal, the loyalty. Yeah, right? loyalty. That viral thing that'll throw you off. Oh my god, there's a camera there. <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah, I think I like it better without the facing screen. Don't look at the camera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just don't look. So then, what's the plan with Instagram now? I try to focus. I'm really so not. I can I can get rid of all those other. Oh no no. no. <laughs> Don't get rid of anything. I am still barely using it because I'm trying to niche down on um, recovering from 2020 <laughs> income loss. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to focus more on. Well, income loss, you took the year off, bro. Oh, yeah. It was my fault. Yeah. A hundred percent. But it, I took a massive hit and I wasn't expecting it to go a year. Right. I Nobody. Was, no, you were like June. Weren't we all thinking, oh, in June, we'll be I back thought here. I was taking off a couple months till this thing wore off. <laughs> right. And it, it, it went to the end of the year, and I, and then I, I, I ran out of... No, I'm amazed you know. by the people that a month or two in, and where are we at? We're in February 2020. That, or February 2021. But in 2020, after a month or two, people were like, you know, I'm just going to get on with life, and I'm going to do it in a way that's COVID safe, but I'm not... I just don't know how you do that. I'm going to push through. Well, you know how you do that? You do that if you're, I guess, aligned with the people you live with. Because I can't, you know, with my wife and kids, I'm not going to go out and and say, you know, forget COVID or or take, I guess, unnecessary risks, right? Right. Or unnecessary travel or whatever. Right. So you got to lock it down. Yeah. Well, you know, this was interesting, I think, for families or couples Oof. or relationships in general. Right. Because... I never spent this much time with when I was growing up with my family. No way. No, no. I was not home. <laughs> and to be honest, I haven't spent this much time with my wife. Oh, uh, I know. In, in years, years. And I and, and the way I look at it for a lot of couples, a lot of relationships. That's where what everybody right now kind of like laughs nervously. <laughs> you, you, yeah. <laughs> they chuckle. It's, like, it's a matter of if if you were unstable in any way, you got two choices. Fix it, yeah, or get out. Every, everything's in the magnifying glass. Dude. So, so Instagram. Let's wrap it up. What are you doing with Instagram now? Nothing. Buka Levy. Buka Levy. At Buka Levy. Oh, so yeah. So when I do have one, you're going to blow up now. When I do have one, that's <laughs> <laughs> hold on. The tens of listeners are rushing there as as they as they hear this. When I have something that's super specific, I'll either share it on mine and one of my other Splinter social medias. The whiskey one? or if Is it's, there a whiskey one? Yeah. Or if I don't want it on my personal one because it's I don't provocative. think people want to see that. Yeah. It's really provocative. You know, I don't normally post alcohol on my thing because I'm not a big alcohol. No, you've never been a big drinker. All right. Bad press is good press. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I, I just, I didn't do it on purpose and I just realized, oh, I don't normally post this kind of stuff. I'm not promoting this. Right. To everybody. 
I'd rather just share with people who are what whatever you call it, you know, they're they're driven down on on that thing. Right. So their interest is in topical bourbon specifically. Right. They're, in, what they're like. in the one thing you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't drink much, but I do like bourbon and I like you're it. just the world's most interesting man. I like it. <laughs> I don't I don't drink much, but when I do, I, I, I like it. I, <laughs> I like bourbon. I like Italian red blends. So those, those are my two things. I have a channel for that. Bottle philosophy. Bottle philosophy. Okay. Yes. So there you go. Come, See, coming out. That's the one. <laughs> that's the one that stuck with me. Yeah. So enthusiasts. Is Got it. So bourbon right. enthusiasts is. I'll share my bourbon stuff with them. Because they're gonna love it. Bourbon. Yeah. I just I that's what I'm doing. As far as I go is bullet. And then I just It's safe. It's yeah. a safe bet, yeah. Although I did have some old Forester ones mm, when go. I was in Tahoe. That's a step up. Oh my God. Yeah. And and it <laughs> I think it costs half of what the bullet costs, or I don't know. That's probably not true. I don't know. I thought old Forester was definitely in the kind of like the high end bargain bourbons or whatever. I don't think so. You so know, good though. It's like yeah. butter. Yeah, I unfortunately I don't pay attention to prices. I pay more attention to the tastes. No, there you go. Whole Force is up there. That's a good one. That's the only one I can name that I, that really kind of blew my skirt up. I was like, wow, that's that's nice. Okay, yeah, yeah. good one. All right, yeah. Uh, so, oh, so time with your wife. I totally interrupted you and yanked you off that. I don't think so. I think I was done with that. You're done. Yeah, <laughs> you're done with just, spending time with your wife. No, just touching on that. Everything's good. Everything's real good. Yeah. At home. Yeah. I've heard this from many people. Who, well, you were excited about the Mini Cooper back in the day. Was I? So on a on a separate note, going completely off into nowhere, for reasons of somebody passing away, I reconnected with an old friend of mine who lives out in Guerneville. <laughs> and he's got the Mini Cooper S. And, oh. like, and the tranny starting to fuss with him a little bit. <laughs> Like, oh, that's that's uh, when it's time to go. <laughs> How old is it? Craigslist, that baby. I donated mine. Oh, cars for kids, cars for kids. Yeah, you know what? I didn't know about cars no, for kids. No, but people don't know these things about the mini, dude. The minis are, by the way, awesome car, amazing. My favorite driver, yeah, so far. But the clutch is it's like buying a new car. Well, the clutch, yeah, it's insane. Yeah, the clutch, the tranny, and yeah. If you need to fix, uh, if you need to change a fuse in the mini, you have to pull the whole engine out. <laughs> and you know what it's, he said? Because I, I started bringing the stuff up and he goes, fucking BMW, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, BMW, well, the mini, the they, mini, they don't want you to be able to fix it. Of course. But the mini in particular is a BMW smashed into a smaller size. Yeah. It's compressed. So everything's, There's, yeah. You know, elbow it's to like elbow. a spaceship. Yeah, you can't get to one piece without going through 10 That other special pieces. wrench yeah. to get that special panel off. Got to get that special wrench, special panel. The Mini, yeah. Mini Cars for Kids. Cars for Kids, so yes. You, you get the tax write-off. With the horrible jingle that it's we not, all know. It's not very much, which is not surprising. Well, tax write-offs are, we'll get to that later, but okay. tax write-offs aren't even a thing anymore for me, so. Well, they may be in your future. Okay, you know, good. Because I, I want some sponsorships of that. Sponsorships start rolling. No, that out. whole double deduction thing just murdered me. What's the, do I not know that? the 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 big Trump tax bill where you get double? You know, you get some double deduction, and so if you try to write anything off, yeah, I'm not super. Took away a bunch of write offs, basically. Okay. For me, my auto. My auto expenses were huge. I don't and it pay took that away. I don't pay nearly enough attention. Well, you pay somebody to pay that attention. Yeah. Fiverr for your CPA or do not use Fiverr <laughs> for your tax return. But I just, just to wrap up the cars for kids. Yes. Cars for kids. I got an email with my tax. 1-800 cars for kids. Yeah. You almost had me going. <laughs> <laughs> I got my, whatever my right. 1099 for whatever the, for the form mini, number the is, form is for the, for the mini, Cars for Kids donation. I also got a voucher to go stay in some condo. Wait, what? Of my choice in like 40 states or something. No. Yeah. Like a coupon? Like three nights or something like that. Really? Yeah. With your tax form? Yeah. It's a bonus. From for- Cars for Kids. <laughs> yeah. That's really a thing. Yeah. I'll let you know. I'm going to do it. Okay. I'll, oh, you got I'll, it now. I have it. I haven't signed up for it yet. Okay. 
And after I do, I'll let, let me you get, know. Let me guess. You just got to spend eight hours in a seminar. I, I suspect <laughs> there might be something involved like that. Which, by the way, that was one thing that I've always kind of envied is you seem to have the tolerance of like, you know, the, the, the timeshares are the, like, we're, we're going to give people all this stuff and there's no way they're going to be able to get through our, you know, eight hour course without signing up for something. And yeah. And you've always been like, they're not getting me oh, ever. You're, you're not getting me. I'll sit through your thing. <laughs> and yeah, you'll go through your thing. You'll participate. Yeah. You'll be happy about it. And then you'll just turn your back on them and walk. Yeah. Well, and take- I'll stay friends with them. I mean, I, I'll, <laughs> Are, are but looking, they're never going to get you. Dude. They're looking for a house. I may turn it around. <laughs> turn flipping on them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not kidding. How in, how is how is the housing market gotten so crazy? Is it all remote working out of San Francisco? Yeah. That's it. I'm going to say 100% ish. A guy in my street sold his house for he got 30,000. I'll leave out all the gory yeah. details, but he got 30,000 over asking, which doesn't necessarily mean anything because if Depending you price, on, if you price it at a hundred dollars, right, 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 right. No, I mean, well, so obviously I don't know what most people do. The other half does, but my half, when a house goes for sale in your neighborhood, you're like, Ooh, okay. What are they putting it up for? And what, what do I think it's worth? Yeah. And so they put it up and the neighborhood consensus was that it was a little on the high side. Well, and then they got 30 over asking. Yeah. And I was like, that's so, because your neighborhood isn't following the market. Okay. Everything's on the high side. Now there's a new high side. There's a new high side. Yeah. There's a new regular, there's a new average. Yeah. Everything's over. Whew. It's just the competition's fierce, fierce because, and I'm friends with the new owners now, which is cool. Good, of course. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. You can whittle it down to this. There's a lot of cash coming up here. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of cash. Well, it's a great up. place to be. So it's a great place. And if you're coming from San Francisco or south of... Yeah, the peninsula, San Mateo. This is a bargain. <laughs> they, they laugh. Ah! Yeah. 900 oh, grand? Ah! Yeah. <laughs> I Yeah. So just throw an extra Four bedroom? 150 on top of that and it's mine? <laughs> right. I'll take it. Oh. Yeah, because they're... I Yeah, so... I just lost a, a deal for some buyers, well over a hundred thousand over asking. You're kidding me! I'm not kidding. That's nuts. How does anybody plan for any of that? You, I mean, you can't. Well, they're from here, so. Well, that's that's so the end. The, so the people ended up buying on our street. We're from here, and they basically, they're like, the cash, we're not, we're they, not losing they, this one. They sold the Bitcoin and yeah. paid cash for the house. <laughs> oh, don't get me started on Bitcoin. <laughs> Oh, and I want to talk about GameStop too. Get your take on GameStop because you must have followed that a little bit. A little bit. Okay. No, they just dumped everything they had. They just were like, they went all in. Awesome. Yeah. And they got it. So. Well, we lost to cash. Yeah. I mean, the only offers I've lost this year were to cash. Explain to me cash because as a seller, why do I care if it's cash or not? You can close in 10 days. That's it? It's just faster? Like if the bank scratches a check, some mortgage company or it's cash. It's psychological. I mean, outside it of that. It sounds cool. If it's a 30 day. I'm, I'm getting a, ca- I'm getting a ca- cash offer, which to me sounds like somebody's coming over the briefcase. This is all it is. This is all it is. Yeah. You can close faster. Okay. And there's no bank in the way that midway through, if you go out and buy an RV or something. Or the bank open, goes, hey, this isn't worth that. Open or- 10 new credit cards mid escrow, which you should know. You know, the bank is, there's no guy in the middle who's going to go, wait, wait, wait. wait, no, wait no, no, no. Slow it down. Forget it. We're not, we can't, yeah. we can't do your loan now. You're spending but then, does that ever happen? And then the deal closed. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're about to close that, girl. <laughs> That's awesome. Your client goes out. I mean, buys, it's not awesome. Buys it's a brand crazy. new Mercedes. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I'm, I'm reminded. Shit, good, hit the, hit good, the brakes. <laughs> I'm thinking of Goodfellas. Do you ever see Goodfellas when, when Robert De Niro goes, okay, don't, nobody buy anything. You know, and then they're they're meeting at the bar. And the one guy, <laughs> what, and the guy comes in with yeah. a fur coat on his wife. He's like, give me the coat. Yeah. Yeah, hot look, tip. Look, look at my new Cadillac. Hot tip: if your if your realtor hasn't told you, if you're, <laughs> don't do if you're buying a house. Do not spend any money <laughs> for the duration of this escrow. Oh man, yeah, danger. Yeah, I've had it happen. I've got through it, but oh, uh, I got an update on that. I had a guy who homes. did a thing. It it wasn't covered in my don't spend any money. He quit his job. Oh, what? Just before closing, and the bank's like, hey, what? Well. <laughs> 
<laughs> of course they did. <laughs> you, you, you couldn't quit in like in two weeks? Yeah, you can't just quit your job. <laughs> that's actually called your income. I yeah, think. that's how you qualify for this house. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, the dryer died of the washer and dryer. We got a new washer and dryer. Sorry. I don't remember if you remember the legend of the washer and dryer, but that killed one of my real estate deals. Somebody wanted the washer and dryer. Man. And we shut it all down. <laughs> <laughs> because that's my Vegas washer and dryer. Also, if I remember correctly, that wasn't the first straw. There was a No, there was a lot of build up and it, that was the yeah, last straw. Yeah. And it's like, okay, we'll do everything, just give us the washer and dryer, and I was like, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get and, into that. And now that's, the washer and dryer's yeah, gone. It's got, okay. Yeah. Well, that's a long time. Yeah, no, it's a very long time. Yeah, excellent. No, it's, I feel sad. Okay. Well, you got the memory. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, we scored. So we got local people in, new neighbors, family. Awesome. Fantastic. How's the hood? The hood's great. Awesome. So good. Yeah. In I fact, I don't want to, because... When I say this, I realize it makes it sound like I didn't like the people that moved out. It keeps getting better. Yeah, that's huge. <laughs> you know, I mean, we've had more families move in and everybody's pretty cool. So, yeah, that's the best. It seems like that with most things. And it, some some peninsula people, some local people, too. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, the school district. Oh, there's hot. been multiple sales in there. Dude, it's the so the turnover from the original. I don't know. What do you, what do you call it? Development? Yeah. It's moving up near 50%. Wow. So. And every time a place sells for way over asking, everybody starts looking around like, how bad do I want to live here? Okay. So I'm not doing a good enough job. You're not. Helping you no. spread the word about Agent Levy. Right. <laughs> Terrible. That's not my style, but. Oh. That'd be nice. Yeah. So, agentlevy.com. Agentlevy.com. Which, the, by the way, yeah. The original branding. It's still you, holding. By yeah. you. Yeah. Um, it's not. It's out. It's out now. Well, you took a year off. No, it's been out for a while. I mean, okay. th that branding retired. Oh, that I branding. retired that branding about seven years ago, five years ago. We have a new branding now. Okay. Yes. Moving into a new era. 2020. Who are you working with for a broker? My broker is EXP. Oh, okay. The fastest growing brokerage in the world. No, they were fast growing Currently. a year ago too. Yeah, it's it's insane. It's explosive. It's insane. We grown into I think seven different countries. I can't believe the value they give you to work with, and the you know, and all the different incentives for people to go with the XP. It's incredible. It's incredible for agents, and I'm spending the maybe half my time now building systems for new agents coming in. Wow. Yeah, so they can come in and just succeed right because you were big from the get you were you were you were big broker what about what's the word i'm looking for big box broker yeah i don't know yeah yeah keller williams previously in my opinion uh one of the best brokers in the world but exp splintered off of keller williams took that system improved it you know kind of like the honda toyota or you know a million other things well they really empowered the agents compared to the other yeah more for the standardized agents, you know more for the agents less for the company, you know, cause they're already getting enough. Right. And, and just dumped all that into more for the agents. It's killer. Love it. Yeah. Lots of, lots of benefits for agents, lots of growth potential, lots of support, tons of support. It's crazy. Training every day, classes every, all day long, every nice. day. What's that um, been like in the zoom era? Oh, it's the, the, the king. EXP Positioned perfectly. Well, actually, yeah. So kind of, let, me, let me rewind a little bit. So w f let me tell you what little I knew of EXP, and then you can tell me where they're going at now. But it originally, it was to decentralize, to, to basically get agents out of an office, per se, and everything was going to be virtual, if I remember right. It was more of like a... Well, I wouldn't say to get them out of an office, but to stop dumping money into brick and mortar. Right. I, it was kind of less as brick a, and mortar. As a yeah. brokerage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, we, of course, you know, we had our office here. Right. Locally, we as a group decided to go in on an office because it's nice to have a place to bring your clients. Right. But that's on us. That's our choice. We pick the place. We pick what we want to spend. Right. You know, we pick the environment. Gotcha. Or we don't. If there's COVID, you shut down the brick and mortar. Right. Take it home. Everybody's still rolling. 
yeah, we're still rolling. You know, we didn't completely shut down. We still have Keller Street is our is our home base, right? But we don't have as much square footage because it doesn't make sense, and and you know it doesn't cost us, and then that's more we can put into the client, right? It's amazing. It's the best. It's the best. I'm ready for things to open back up though again. See, that's the thing. That's where I'm at. I, as I'm waiting, and you know, I'm not getting any younger, and <laughs> and you're older than me, but I'm waiting for a vaccine and I'm waiting for, you know what I mean? To kind of like start loosening things up. Yeah. And, so, and life's getting by me, man. And there's, so life's getting by me and I see other people that have accepted the new normal and I'm not saying that they're less safe, but they're willing to engage more with the world. Okay. Yeah. In other words, they've created, so I'm waiting for things to get back to 2019, right? Yeah. In a way. And 2019 is not coming back. And I think other That's people, have, same so. other people have done a better job than me of, of adjusting this course change in humanity, I guess, because it's, it's profound right. and they're moving on. I haven't moved on yet. So would you say that's affecting the podcast? It's affecting everything I do. Okay. So yeah, the same for me. I, my life revolves around being social. I know. <laughs> Right. All my income revolves around. Being oh my social. God. I didn't even think about the other part of your income. Jesus. It's gone. So, several parts of my income are gone. Yeah. I um, mean, your music's gone. The music's yeah. It's non-existent. 2020. Jeez. Yeah. Well, that's uh, less taxes. I got to pay. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, I have uh, you know, some of my income. Oh my God. That's away. crazy. So now I'm thinking about that. And then your home war. When you're home more already, that's crazy, man. Home more, yeah. I I like home. I've I've had too much home. I'm homed oh, yeah. out. Yeah, 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 no, no, no. Yeah, I'm a I'm a work. That's fair to say, right? Some might call me a workaholic. I like to work. I do not like to bring work home. That's awful. you can't well because you can't work at home anyway. It's off limits. Yeah, <laughs> I can't work at home. <laughs> Jesus, you Christ. can't work at home. So that's off limits. And you know, I've I've heard. I don't know if you've ever heard this. It's, yeah. There's some some old proverbs about not working at home. You, you leave work at work and you... It always sounds great, home. though. Well, the thing is, you know, if you bring work home, in a lot of cases, not all cases, it's going to interfere with your family life. And if you have young kids, you don't ever want to have to tell your kid who wants to tell you something amazing. Right, right. That, you know, Get out of here! Yeah. Or anything like that. Not good. So... um Daddy's Man. doing an OnlyFans. Get out of here. I'm, t- I'm telling you, <laughs> it's hard when you're doing so. you got a client on the Zoom or something. Your kid's got to tell you something right now. Yeah. You got to go. You got to make a tough decision. <laughs> I see. And and I'm going to go out on a limb and say I've been wrong about this, is that I thought most people don't care. In other words, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to call a timeout on camera and just lean over and. Well, that's what I do. And deal with the situation with my kid because kids come first, right? It's what I... Uh, but a lot of people, I don't know if the kids come first in that scenario. In that scenario. I'm not saying anybody's bad or the, any right. decision's right or wrong. But I've I've noticed that when I make that decision, other people are like, oh, he's talking to his kid, you know? Yeah. Well, to give them the benefit of the doubt, in their mind, they're thinking, we need to get this done. I wouldn't talk to my kid. And... To that person on the other side, if their kid came along, they're they're thinking, I need to get this deal done so I can provide for my kid. And you can go to your kid. So I can yeah. take him to baseball and pay for all swimming nobody's, lessons. Nobody's going to baseball. All the though. things. But baseball's out right now. It's twenty twenty one. I gotta pay for his internet connection. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Fortnite. Raise your hand if you uh, if you've deviled sports your sports team. Your <laughs> if you've given Xfinity more money in the last year. You know, whatever the thing I gotta put food on the table. Oh, Fortnite. I got to pay for counseling. <laughs> <laughs> Which apparently that's one of the, the booming industries. I imagine, huh? I didn't. I didn't no, booming in the sense of like certain things because COVID's changed the game on so many things. And we all know that we're going to be doing more remote stuff in the future. But apparently they found counseling is nearly, in a lot of cases, as effective virtually as it is being in person. Oh, yeah. So there you go. I saw some study. You know, I mean, what do we have? What does any of us have to do but like doom scroll the news or Twitter all day? So I haven't done that. Oh, news free. <laughs> You're so lucky, dude. All right. Yeah. It's a choice, right? Yeah, that's true. I mean, I've, I've 
reeled it back way back. Yeah, I try and I, I try and touch on the news occasionally. Oh, camera one's down. Camera one. Yeah. <laughs> camera one's down. Can we? Yeah. Okay. And we're back. Had to take a break there. All right. Yeah. Back in business. Back in business. Technical difficulties. Tef- technical difficulties. No, uh, I was talking about like a raffle. It's so funny. If you, I was doing some fundraising for a while. And if you just ask somebody for 20 bucks to donate 20 bucks to whatever, it's like, uh, you know, they hedge a little bit. You give them a raffle ticket with a one in a million lottery ticket chance. They're like, oh, I've got a physical thing I can put my hands on. You know, this is so much better than just giving you $20. Huh. So I think, I think books do that for some people. Like you have all these influencers or whatever, and they're out there doing their thing. But then I notice a lot of them have a product, usually a book. Yeah. And it's also like, if you like what I do, go buy my book. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I'm doing this, this book. Right. We're in it now. Yeah. <laughs> we just, so for the record, just like five minutes ago when we were taking a break, we talked about how we weren't going to talk about the book. Yeah. So the, this, this should be like paid content or something. I know. Well, or they can just put buy the, the book, put the paywall up yeah, or buy the book. The uh, book. So I'm writing the book just for We'll my, talk about writing a book, not the book. Can we do that? It's sort of the same to me. Yeah. I mean, do you do a pseudonym or not? Or what do you do? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> How many uh, books have you released so far? Many. Many. Actually. Oh. Yeah. I well, not really. As many as Instagram accounts? I've I tried this thing where you participate in a book. Oh, okay. Like you write a chapter. Oh, that sounds cool. And maybe it gets part into the book or maybe it doesn't, and then now you can say I'm an author. Okay. Super in the end, in the beginning it feels like this is gonna be amazing. Be. <laughs> it and sounds then, amazing. And then you get it and you're like, This is not really my book. Or what this what am is, I doing with these people? This is, yeah, <laughs> this is, I'm embarrassed now. Oh. So I, I bail on all that. I'm writing my own book really just to say some stuff, just to go, what do I know that can help somebody? Well, it's, it's part of, it's got to be about your kids, right? I mean, isn't that the motivation for anything? No, not at all. No life lessons for the kids in there. It's a financial book. Okay. But 20 years, you know, or 20 is probably, I'm selling you short, but- you know, there, you know, a hundred years from now, some ancestor of yours grabs the book. Are they going to get anything out of it? Or is it going to be like, eh? Yeah, they will. Okay. Yeah, it's principles. Right. It's ideas. And it's not for everybody. It's for people. You, you'll immediately recognize if this is what you want. This is how you your, think your about thing. money right. or not. And it's how I think about money. And I just thought there's got to be somebody else who thinks about money like this or this would appeal to. There, there's got to be. And there will be some strategies in there that will apply to taking care of your kids or your legacy. Oh, okay. So yeah, in I that sense. That. I feel bad because I, I subscribed to a money philosophy that Susie Orman was pushing hard <sighs> in the 90s, right? Yeah. Well, and, that's, uh, what, that's what was out there. It was, and, it was better than fending for yourself. No, but 90s Susie Orman would completely disagree with 2020. I don't even know if she's around anymore. She is. I just saw her. But uh, she actually went in the opposite direction. Did she? She might be back now. Who knows? I'm off of Susie Orman. Oh, so okay. I don't know what she's preaching. So back then, what she was preaching is have no debt. Don't pay interest. Oh, Dave Ramsey also. Right. Still and, to this day. Okay. And that's the direction I went. And then, you know, in, a, in other words, she's like, never use your credit cards. Never use. Well, she flipped on all that. Ah, did she? Yeah. She totally flipped on it. Well, you know, I didn't go with her though. I'm like, I like the old you. Yeah. Well, you got to. So Dave Ramsey, that's his deal. I see him everywhere. Oh yeah. He's huge. No debt. Do not have debt. I'm not paying anybody interest, bro. Any circumstances. I'm not paying anybody to use their money. I agree. That's good philosophy. Except for the house. I have a different philosophy. All right. Mostly when it comes to business. Okay. Debt. Debt. Business credit. Business credit. And, And that is. Just for me, you know. Right. If you can get cheap money to Which make money's cheap right now. To make more money. Like if I can borrow a hundred dollars and pay you three percent, right. To make twenty percent with that hundred dollars. Oh, GameStop. <laughs> I'm kidding. Damn. I'm kidding. Then I'm gonna do that. Right. 
And then I'm going to give you your 3% interest and I'm going to keep the 17 profit. Right. So that's my philosophy. Okay. That, that works for me for the things that for do. me, I never get the 17 though. Yeah. Well, but that's th- me. Then don't do that. Then do the, yeah. I've, I've stopped doing that for a long okay. time. Yeah. All my, the majority of the things I do revolve around that necessity. I got to borrow money from this guy to make this money. I can identify profit areas and they're usually outside of my zone of my, my financial ability. Right. So I got to borrow money from this guy to get to that money. Yeah. But that works though. It's a great relationship. Yeah. That guy gets the profit he's looking for. Right. I get the profit I'm looking for. That guy over there gets the profit from me. Yeah. For buying his thing. They get what they wanted at a price. They literally everybody wins. They appreciate. Yeah. All winners. (laughs) I, yeah. So I'm in the business of making winners. (laughs) (laughs) So the games, did you see the GameStop thing? Damn. Which, by the way, this, not in time. This thing. Well, I know, <laughs> I know. I'm not. I hold no regrets for because I know that that's not my world. Not mine either. <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't have done it. I anyway. would. I would if if I dabbled into that world of short selling and 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 squeezing short sellers and everything yeah. else. I'd end up naked in, a, in an alley, beat up and broke. Yeah. Well, that's, I. I'm. Yeah. I'm. A I big, do dabble. You dabble a lot more than I do. Well, I have a threshold. I have a percentage. Of play money, let's call it. Oh, okay. You know, I think everyone should have that. Yeah. Money, you just risk. Extra money. Risk money. You know, yeah, you should have that. You should have a, a percentage you save for retirement, a percentage you give to charity. Right. A percentage you use for risk. Percentage in cash, percentage for spending, whatever. You should have your categories. Oh, geez. Who's got time for that? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I'm I'm being tongue in cheek, and but I'm not. I mean, none of us are. It's like, you know, it's like how clean your house should be and how clean it is. Yeah, well, if you don't take care of your finances, they're not going to take, take care of you. Oh. I was going to say it that way, but the, the, <laughs> this popped in my mind. It sounded better. <laughs> anyway, yeah, they'll take care of you in a mobster kind of way, right? Yeah, you're going to bury yourself. So, yeah, so the play money goes all in on that stuff. But I didn't catch that Reddit thing. That was amazing. No, the Reddit, so the Reddit GameStop thing. But it's funny because there's so many different facets to it. Because it's not like just the little guys are burning the big Wall Street guys. No, not little guys. Yeah, far more complicated than that. And and also that there's other big Wall Street guys in with the little guys, you know. Well, the little guys are really, yeah, they're not that little. They're not little like us. Right. They're big. Well, some are. I mean, the, I mean, in that story, it was pretty easy to find some kid. You know, there was the kid whose grandparents gave him one share of GameStop for Christmas. Well, the majority of that, I mean. There's the, a lot of those stories, but the, the big players. The guys who made the moves, they were like putting in big money. Oh, I mean, especially once. I mean, so here's, first of all, I have no sympathy for hedge funds getting squeezed on a short sale. No, you know, no, this is a perfect, this is right up our alley. Like yeah. The little guy. Yeah. The little guy wins killing the, the big um, guy that's trying to screw him. Totally. But oh, the whole Robin hood thing, you know, everybody's like, <laughs> Oh, I thought my trades were free. Yeah. <laughs> well, so do you know the story behind that? I just learned this. Okay. So go ahead. I'm not that savvy about it, but so now everyone hates Robin hood and the other people who shut down. I don't the, hate them. I mean, right it's after. a, it's a business model they had and. Nothing's Robin this Hood's way. trying to keep us down. Here's a, here's a lesson to everybody. Nothing's free. Well, here's the thing. So here's the the reality of it is, is always behind the scenes. So right. Robin Hood and all the other brokerages didn't just decide to shut you down because you're taking their money. It's they're getting shut down by the guy between them. Right. And their investors. Yeah. Well, that, there's a regulatory system in the middle that goes, Hey, you don't have enough money to cover this stuff. Right. So you, you can't, you can't make, anymore. you can't make those trades because you, you don't have that money to you back can't, it up. You can't, these trades can't keep happening. Yeah. So everybody gets shut down by some central. No, but the authority. thing about Robin hood that I think a lot of people never thought about is they make money off of the information about your trades. They don't execute your trades. They sell, they sell your trade to somebody else and somebody else aggregates all that data and they get to make their moves on your trades before they execute your trades. So it's information. So as I understand it, and I could be t- completely wrong and, but that Robin hood gives other people an opportunity to play off what their investors are doing before their investors do it. So you're at Robin hood, you click trade, 
and that trade goes through and whatever time it goes through. But in between then, somebody else who is paying Robinhood gets all of Robinhood's data and gets to make a trade based off of what's going to happen with those trades in the future. Yeah, I'm not that sad. I don't know anything. But I mean, of course it does, because nobody's going to do free trades. So this information is not to be construed as financial as advice. financial <laughs> advice at all. We're a bunch the, of idiots. The opinions expressed on yeah. this podcast are that of the... Uh, a couple of idiots talking about couple of idiots money. talking about stuff. In there. <laughs> like I said, I ended up naked and beat up in an alley <laughs> in the financial world. Yeah, no. I Yeah, I don't know anything about it. I don't even know anything about Robin Hood. I got sucked into a couple of these... Fly by not fly by night, but these here's what here's what Robin Hood type. So here's the story. Here's the story, and you're gonna laugh. And this is a weird thing that happened to you and I. God knows how many years ago, 20, 30 years ago. They held up the sign at the line, and they. (laughs) (laughs) That's what the Reddit guys did. You know, they held the sign up, and everybody moved. Hey, let's get over here. Let's get in this line. (laughs) That's everybody got in this line, and then they made their money, and then handed somebody the sign. (laughs) <laughs> yeah that's what happened <laughs> that's what happened wow what a great metaphor isn't that amazing that uh, always comes back yeah that was a real like lesson once, like Life once lesson. a year <laughs> so the story was as you and i were going to a show i'll tell the story okay, and okay. feel that I'm gonna, i'll make a detail or specific light but you and i were going to a show we we camped out for tickets and overnight overnight and there were three shows and one line with all three shows in one line which was a horrible... Makes no sense. Yeah. The the proprietor, that was a horrible decision they made. But you and I decided to get a Sharpie and a piece of cardboard and write second show on a sign and, and walk to the front of the w- w- single line with three groups in it and with our cardboard sign of second show. I think... And a third of the this massive line shifts think, over and falls in that, line. I think it's important. Yeah. We, we noticed something happening. They opened up the doors for the first showing. And oh, people yeah, were our timing to, was really good. Yeah, people there was a lot were of confusion. having to come out. Yeah, who's who is in the first showing? Are you here for the first showing? Come over, come up front. It's time, and people were splintering off of the line, and we're going, "Oh, what's happening?" Here? <laughs> and we so, li- so we literally we recognized yeah a trend or or, or whatever you would call that specifically yeah, and we we made good on it and. So a third, a third of these people fall in, in line, like in perfect order, right, we, right behind us. We saw these, this hedge fund. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, no, so they fall in right behind us. Or were we the hedge fund? I know. What, what happened there? In that scenario. <laughs> and we literally handed the sign to the next guy in line and said, we'll be back after breakfast. And we went and had breakfast. Yeah. It's so amazing. We established the fund. <laughs> and then we got out. Yeah. Then we walked away. <laughs> and left somebody else holding the sign. We'll be back to collect. <laughs> oh, so good. It's amazing. So yeah, but I missed the whole GameStop thing. So there's always part of me uh, of like, oh, I could have gotten rich off of that or whatever. And then I realized could've. that's not any world I would ever be in anyway. So I don't hold myself. You could have if you're also willing to be broke. Right. Right. But people put in just for the math on this, and I, I, it's it goes. It's like when you hear Neil deGrasse Tyson talk about space, yeah. like it just blows your mind. But people were putting in like twenty grand investments and being tens of millionaires. I only saw one. It's guy, insane. I saw one person's trades. Right. He showed me his, his, his the whole path of his trades. He put. Oh, in, you knew a guy. No, I. Oh, okay. He posted it on his channel or uh, in a private group. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. He uh, he made. He put 80,000 in. Oh my God. Yeah. Depending on when, but yeah. Yeah. Early. No, not that early. Okay. No, in in the heat. Okay. Put in 80,000, got out at 2 million. It's awesome. Yeah. Right near the top. Not the tippy top. I think it hit 500. He got got out mid 300s. I forget what he bought. I guess you could do the the math and figure that out. Right. Put in 80,000. Got but still, out, the math on that's insane. Got out at two million, yeah, <laughs> in a day or two. So literal overnight millionaire. Oh my god, it's incredible! It's amazing. <laughs> and I always want to believe it's the little guy, but there was a lot of other. Well, he had eighty thousand to gamble, right? Who who's got that? Yeah, well, not me. I mean, a lot of people do. I guess I don't. Yeah, either I don't have that either. Let me take my kids' college <laughs> and yeah. just let it ride. Yeah. Oh. I mean, because they don't have to go to college. 
Uh, but they could become millionaires. <laughs> God. Is it worth it? It's oh. one of those things where you kind of, there were also a lot of guys who were riding GameStop anyway. But see, I don't want. And all they had to do is decide to get out at the right time. Right. So, right. You, so you set this stop loss thing to, if yeah. it hits this, get out. And then you're just happen to be in the right place at the right time. Kind of like crypto. Oh, I know. But so getting, cause I want to get back to your, your, you know, potential book, this, this idea you yeah. have. Yeah. Is that for me, that's a game that other people play that yeah. for a couple of reasons. One, I really can't afford to do that. And two, I'm not particularly interested in getting rich quick. I mean, obviously everybody would be like, Oh, it'd be great to win a lottery or whatever. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I feel like life wise, like I'm 85, 90% there, you know, I'd like to travel more, you know, there's a few things I'd like to do more of, but I'm good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm good too. That's why the book. Yeah. So, I mean, I made it. Why, why be disappointed that you're not winning that lottery ticket again this week or whatever and miss, but I think part of that is where we live too. I mean, I I really believe Northern California is like, like a special place in the world. Oh, it's like a brain trust, sort of. Is that what you mean? No. What do you mean? Not at all. You couldn't understand what I'm trying to talk about less. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that that we're very fortunate where we live. We live in Petaluma, but Petaluma yeah. is in the middle of Sonoma County, which is the in the middle of the Redwood Empire, man. And yeah. and for regions in the world, we've got snow, we've got surf, we've got wine, we've got agriculture we've got livestock we have an insane cost of living too though that's why we do it's not free but god we got the best of everything around here yeah it's amazing it's It's amazing amazing. the reason i thought of it that way is because there's a mentality up here also okay and more so in the bay area right that you i I get around the bay sink or swim i mean do you want to stay here you better figure out a skill (laughs) You better get good at yeah. NorCaling. Yeah, you want to you want to just whatever party it up and have a good time and sort of get by paycheck to paycheck. You're not going to be here very long. Yeah, and the, some people unless figure you that were out, here some when people it, don't. Unless you were here when it started, like we were, you know. Yeah, but still, I mean, my I mean, kids are here when. I mean, what right. do you mean when it started? You know, it's been just it's a different graph. Right. Here is all. Well, it's like, it's like a ski slope it just or a ski jump. It just gets steeper and steeper. Yeah. So, I mean, it started way before us, but it's but, just getting uh, here, harder, harder Here's what I'm getting at is I'm, I am not a rich man by any means. I mean, I, but I'm, I'm doing good. Financially. Financially. I'm, I'm financially solid and I can go buy a new pair of sneakers and not have to worry about it. But, but you're wealthy in life. I'm not going to go buy a new car anytime soon. But Wednesday I was sitting out at Northwood golf course, which for anybody that knows Northwood golf course, which is in Guerneville, it's not exactly your golf coursey kind of golf course. I mean, there's no pro shop. There's no, okay. It's more about the course, which is, goes through redwood trees. Have you been to no. Northwood? You've no. never been to Northwood. No. It's basically like golfing through Armstrong woods. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I mean, it's incredible. And it was Wednesday and it was like 68 degrees out and it was, you know, 12 o'clock and I'm eating Linguisa and eggs. And it was just incredible. the red way. With sourdough. <laughs> no, I didn't golf. I'm not okay, interested yeah. in golfing okay. anymore. And that's another thing, like the financial industry. I figured out I'm not a golfer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, and it's a little roadhousey kind of cafe thing. You know, it's like Guerneville. It's like Guerneville's yeah. version of a golf course. It's sure. not a country club yeah. thing. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm like, God, this is just awesome. Yeah. Oh, it's paradise. It's just yeah. paradise, it's man. It's amazing. But so here's back to the way that I took it. And it was 40 bucks for a Bloody Mary for breakfast for two guys. Where I thought you were going with this, yeah. which we both have to think about, right? is we we both have kids. Yeah. Well, you've got a basketball team. I, I like to think, yeah. <laughs> I, I wish they were a band. <laughs> but, uh, um, if it was a band, it'd be like Earth, Wind, and Fire. And if they were a basketball team, they'd be the WBA, which is <laughs> no, but really I mean, a basketball No, but team. I mean basketball, the numbers. I'm talking about, you know, like Rush is a... Obviously, incredible band. Yes, it's three guys. They're not a trio. Oh. Yeah. They're not uh, a trio. How many How many kids are we talking about? Can we do that? Five kids, yeah. Five kids, okay. Yeah. You have two, I always get confused whether it's five or six. So we both know that they can't... Which I apologize what? to the children. 
for getting confused whether it's five or six. Oh. I'm creating an extra child. We both know that our kids can't do it. They can't move out. Here. Well, I'm 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 well beneath age wise. You're at my yep. oldest is ten. So, but so when they right. okay. So let me just tell you. <laughs> Show me the when, future, man. When they become the age of my kids, who are most of them are the age of moving out. They can't move out. They can't. Yeah, you're have late a, teens, a right? Regular job. They can't move out. You mean working at the movie theater isn't going to afford them the life of having no, a gonna, studio you have, apartment? You have or? two choices at this age. You can go to college, right? Live in the dorms, or you can stay home and try and figure out what you're going to do with your life. You can't just move out and just have a kid job where we live anymore. It's not a thing, right? But that was never really a thing for me. It was always like two or three friends were living in a one bedroom or something, you know? Yeah, but. They can't do that. I want, what's a one bedroom here? Three thousand a month. So here's here's what they need. They need a, a dad, right? Who's holding a little extra money. Let's say like eighty grand. You're talking about the eighty grand guy with yeah. play money. Yeah. And uh, because I wish somebody would have done this with me so bad. Because I always live with a bunch of roommates. Yeah. Buy the house for them to live in and let all their friends pay rent cash. Yes. <laughs> and then after ten years, refi and go. Here's your house. Right. Does that work? Is that hundred percent works? That's that was the offer for every one of my kids. Right. I don't want to live with my idiot friends. They all decide to go to JC Ugh. instead and stay at home. So it's it's like paying rent. I mean, you can ha- so parental financial advice. You can have your children's fr- friends pay for their house. Yeah. I mean, it's so easy. It's instead of giving some other guy the money. Gosh. Yeah. You don't necessarily need money down. Worst case, maybe an FHA three and a half percent down. So yeah, let's walk through just for the, this is not for, we're not rich people. You already said that. Yeah. We're not rich people. We're just regular guys. My car's 11 years old. There's systems for these things. Yeah. 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 Well, this is a call it what blue collar. Maybe blue collar is not given enough credit, but just like middle class. Finances, you know, regular guy finances, regular guy finances. It's like we watch all these shows about the thing that was always funny about Susie Orman is she's like, you know, don't go buy sunglasses until you have 12 months of reserves or whatever. It's like, who the fuck lives like that? (laughs) (laughs) You know, who in the, who in God's name has a year's worth of money just sitting away in a sock somewhere, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's nuts. I don't think that's any way to live. I just, but you know what though? I mean, that's great for some people. It is. Who's got that kind of money though? Some people don't want the stress of having chilled out 12 bucks. for <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's just crazy. Yeah. I do believe though, in uh, having the emergency fund, I right. mean, that's what got me through 2020. I've never had to take advantage of the emergency fund you know, until last year. I'm going to, I'm going to probably take my pants down a little bit too much here, but my emergency fund is my line of credit. Well, that's it. That's, I believe in that also. You know, yeah. I mean, we're holding pretty heavy on the equity of our home and, you know, the, our debt to income ratio is great. So, you know, people will always be willing to give us money, especially God. And I want to thank probably my wife for this one, but my, I thought you're going to thank your sponsors and my sponsors, <laughs> my credit score is like 780 or something. I mean, it's just, you know, so you're good. People are always going to give you money. You got it covered. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. Not everyone likes that. If you yeah. If you, if my wife not, doesn't like it. If you're not comfortable with that, then save 12 months. She wants a briefcase with a bunch of stacks of 20s in there. Okay. John Wick style under cement in the garage. Well, I like John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> I like that system. I like having, you know, dozens of dollars on the side. I had to, dozens of dollars. Yeah. Tens of dollars. Yeah. Tens of dollars. <laughs> But my point is, so if you live in Sonoma County and you, you know, and you make some fairly prudent moves, you too can enjoy some sausage and eggs and Guerneville and yeah, it doesn't take put much. the sun on your face with a Bloody Mary and have a great day. So yeah, that's the basis. Which the you, basis. Can't, you can't do that in Minnesota right now or Texas for sure. They're, shit's cold in no, Texas. No, we're so spoiled. Well, we're spoiled. With living in the perfect place. But it's expensive. One of the most perfect places. And it it's 
cost a premium. To this is there. like the it's south. Getting worse. This is the south of France of America. Most, uh, yeah. And unfortunately, <laughs> we didn't have this in our younger years. Unfortunately for our kids, now people know. Now well, you got a point there. Like and, Sonoma County has always been like Napa County's, you know, l- little brother or whatever. But God, yeah, it's so yeah. much bigger and better. And people are figuring out that they, you know, they don't need industry here to live here now because of Zoom. And I know it's going to get crazy. Yeah, and unfortunately, we're you know arm's length from Facebook, Google, at all the money, right? All the Zoom money. We're too. we're perfect twice a week in the office away from Facebook. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you know, it's like I could do that commute twice a week. Yeah, so they're coming. They're coming. That's okay. Kids be all right. They got to, they got to find their own way. Yeah, I to agree. a point, you know. I agree. Who was I talking to? I was talking to somebody. And it's your classic, insanely rich family, trust children, and everybody's a basket case. Yeah, you don't want to do that either. Right. Right. So you got to raise your kids right. (laughs) (laughs) Well, no, you can't. Got to teach your kids about money. You can't hunt for them forever, you know? They got to learn to hunt. Got to teach them how to fish. You got to teach them. Oh, man. I'm going to go with hunting. I hate the fishing (laughs) expression. You want to be a regular, though, on my new unbranded potpourri podcast of potluck obviously okay yeah. cool yeah i gotta get the it's message nice out, man. catching up i know you gotta get the message out you're gonna be, i want you to be because talking about rogan i want you to be a regular dude like yeah like he's got his regulars like jo, who's the regulars on rogan who's the big italian guy joey diaz yeah oh, diaz yeah no I'll, I'll which be, i don't really care for. i'll be the elon musk of your That's show. A, dude <laughs> i can't fucking stand elon musk i love elon musk i hate him you hate him with a passion <laughs> How's, so on that note, how's Texas going right now for you, Musk? I don't know. I don't know how it's going for him. No, uh, he's a dick. He's a dick and he's a deadbeat dad. So I'm going to wrap this up. This, okay. I, I was telling somebody. <laughs> I know on that note, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rewrap it up. <laughs> In that 2021, and I don't know if this is a reaction, reaction like an infection, to Trump or whatever, but in 2021, I have a, I'm not doing business with assholes. So oh, I like that. Yeah. So I happen to have that policy too. I'm voting with my dollars or my ears or my eyes or whatever, my thumbs. And Elon Musk is on my list, man. He's a dick. So you're not getting a Tesla. And he's an asshole. And he may Jeez. be an evil genius and the rest of it. But you know what? He falls into the no asshole. Po- By the way, I got in trouble on Twitter for having a no asshole policy. But now I got to tell that story too. Jesus, can't get out of this thing. But so I'm not, so I, I would love to have a Tesla if, if somebody gave me a Tesla or if I had, you know, I got a 50% off a of Tesla, I'd run out and want to buy one. But now I've, because of the policy, they're outside my, yeah, I can't okay. buy them. Okay. I, can't, I can't touch Tesla. So the other side of that is. No, I, I wanted to tell the story real quick, but hold the other side. And that is on Twitter. I, I, one of the new white house guys got fired for threatening a reporter and everything. And I said, Hey. You know, it sounds like it worked out right that he, he had to resign because I have a no asshole policy and he clearly is an asshole. And now he's not, you know, he's out of a job and maybe he learned his lesson to not be an asshole. And somebody's like, well, he's got stage four cancer. And it's like, oh, so what is that? Is that a side effect? You could argue that it is. That is so inappropriate. I love it. No, it's just that the guy also happened to be diagnosed three months ago or four months ago, which I had no idea, with stage four cancer. But, I, you know, stage four cancer still doesn't, within the policy, the strict guidelines of the policy, if you're an yeah. asshole and, you know, you lose your job, for example. I don't wish anybody cancer, although I won't go there. But somebody else died of cancer, certain AM talk radio hosts, and that didn't break my heart. But, you know, the set, you got to set aside stage four cancer. And that is, you know, that's those are things that you and I could never get away with in the workplace. You know, that's always right. my argument about Trump is he gets away with all these things that if you're, you know, if you're working at a Clover or something, you're never going to get away with the things he says and the things he does, you know. Right. Anyway. So no assholes. I got in trouble because I called somebody an ass or somebody was an asshole that had stage four cancer. Okay. So my, what I was going to say is I have a That's similar it. policy. Yes. I don't work with people that I don't like. 
Oh, I'm glad you're on the show. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't quite take it that far. Okay. For instance, I don't know Elon. So I don't care. I know enough. I don't really care about. I'm going to pass judgment knowing about 1% of them. I don't really care about his personality or what he does. I can't, I. He's got like, five children and five different women. Debbie Dan, does that work? I, no, I know some people like that too who are wonderful people. Oh, no, wait, what? I, that's that, All you, right. You'd have to go down a long road for that. How he affects my life is he makes an awesome car that is doing more good than he's doing bad in my life. Okay. So, sorry. By having the awesome car. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Yeah, yeah, I just can't, I can't support assholes. That's all. And it's going to, and it's going to get hard. And by the way, since we're wrapping this up still, it's going to get hard because somebody's going to go, Oh, I saw that you were drinking a diet Coke and Coke's an asshole or so-and-so head of Coke is an asshole. And you know what? I might have to give up diet Coke. Well, I'm willing to go the distance on the no asshole policy. Okay. You're going to go a, dis- a distance. Yeah. yeah I've, I've considered, I'm going to try to live it. I've considered it at points and I realize it's not for me. It's not something I fully can get behind. It's, I'm going to do it in the sense of like uh, the Jeopardy judge, you know? Okay, the guy at Coke, you know, killed somebody, but it was an yeah. accident. No, I, thi- eh. I think... Um, what does the judge say? Occasionally we could have these... You can be my judge. Occasionally we could have these discussions. Asshole, about, not asshole? About a particular... Yeah, asshole or not asshole. Because I think every one of them is going to go down a pretty long discussion. See, that could be a new podcast too. Asshole, okay. not asshole. See? It may splinter off. If it takes off. <laughs> if it takes off. Um, Speaking of which, oh, and there's one other thing I wanted to talk about. Do you got a minute? Yeah, I have all day. Uh, You're the one putting the time limit on this thing. I know. That was a mistake. Speaking of assholes, Samsung, right? Which saying Samsung's an asshole is you can't say, because they're, they're so big and they make so many different products that I'm sure the the Samsung. I can say it all day long. Oh. They, they won't update my TV. <laughs> so I don't get anything on it. <laughs> so I think the TV people aren't the same people that make the, the washer dryers who aren't the same people that make the uh, headphones, you know, Figures. or the cell phones or whatever. But they made a very expensive, unupdatable TV. Oh. So, okay, well, it's fine. I don't do cable and all that. We're stuff. We're going to bash on Samsung, I, but I can't watch some of the, the single paid channels. No, whatever, this, this is going to be a new individual podcast. I can't get YouTube TV on my TV. How can you not get YouTube TV on your TV? Because it can't update the software. It's not the Roadcaster to take the app. The Roadcaster Pro, which they update about every six months, and they yeah. add, they double the functionality how, of it. How do you make a smart TV that doesn't update? <laughs> it's an idiot, idiot TV. So screw it. I'm okay. fine with that. I'm just not watching TV. So, well, you you complaining about TV is like me complaining about <laughs> Teslas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't get a Tesla because Elon's an asshole. So. We moved into our new house. We're very fortunate. And we bought a new refrigerator, which was $3,500. And it was top of the line Samsung at the time, which is five years old. Oh, Door and door, water and door, ice and door. Yeah. Got it all. Yeah. Just packed. Freezer down below, separate trays, power cooling tray inside. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's awesome. Yeah. It's like the Mini Cooper though. So we've had... So we've had it five years. We've probably gotten about 18 months of ice out of it when the ice maker, ice maker is actually working. It's just sort of dawned on me that things we're complaining about yeah. too, but go on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, it sounds so great. And if you use the power cooling tray, then it freezes over the main <gasps> compartment of the refrigerator. No, the main, all the works that are behind the panel with the fan and everything to where it doesn't work at all. Ugh. So long story short, from leaking water to the refrigerator just not being warmer inside than the house to never getting ice out of the ice maker, it's been nothing but a nightmare. And you try to, and I don't know if you've gone through this with the TV, but you try to call, you know, whatever, whoever you call for help, right? Mm -hmm. 1-800-SAMSUNG or whatever. And they put you on this merry-go-round of, you know, it's a steeplechase. You got to get over this hurdle of have you unplugged it and plugged it back in? It's it's hard every to, time. It's hard to relate that directly to the TV. It's a three. But it's I, a three hour 
investment of time. I can tell you this. Yeah. You're not going to save any of those woes by going with LG. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've had all those too. Okay. Same road. Yeah. I think it might be refrigerators. They might even be the same company. Who knows? It could be, in the end, GE probably owns them both. But Yeah, I don't know. I but they put, you, they put you on the customer service merry go round. You got to run the gauntlet of of this horrible experience they've created. It's the playbook of refrigerator companies. Is it? I think it's just a playbook of a lot of things too. But yeah, specifically refrigerator companies. Because seventy five percent of the people will throw their hands up and hang up. You know. Yeah. So that's going to be my new podcast starting in March of twenty twenty one. Is we're going to walk through our refrigerator. And we're going to record our calls with customer service. And we're going to talk about the steps we go through. To So we still have the fridge, right? Yeah. And I've ended up having to fix it a few times. Which, of course, somebody at some point, I'm going to, you know, spoil, spoiler alert, they're going to say you voided the warranty. But we're going to go through the whole experience and see at the end of the day, because we're going to get a new fridge. Can't, yeah. can't take not having ice. Can't ha- take not having it working. By the way, we know other people physically who have the same problems with the same brand of fridge. So we might talk to them too, but we're going to go through the whole experience of getting the new fridge and trying to get some kind of restitution out of the old one, which is only five years old, whether it's, you know, money yeah. or a new one, or we're going to see what happens. Good luck. Yeah. Are you somehow going to podcast ex- though? Huh? Gonna, are you somehow going to turn it around on the refrigerator guy and no hack into his system and no, no, ruin his refrigerator have you seen the guy i just i just want i want i'd be happy with half the money back have you seen these guys that that like take the calls from the african prince right oh oh you mean the nigerian yeah. print screen scheme yeah and they burn them back oh that's and, awesome and they like delete all the data on their computer yeah that sounds like bullshit to me but yeah man it, it might be a neat story though it's a no. great story. It's entertaining. We are going to chronicle week to week because we're probably going to have to call them once a week, right? We're going to chronicle trying to get something out of Samsung, and I don't want to name names Samsung, but of trying to get some sort of satisfaction out of them for this shitty fridge they sold us. It's terrible. It is. It's awful. Okay. By the way, it's the most incredible refrigerator for like the first two weeks. RLG was good for more than two weeks. Here's the other problem, I think, too, and you you can appreciate this because you, you've got twice this problem. But I think that in the, the test room, you know what I mean? Like they developed the prototype yeah. refrigerator and they put it in there in the break room down at Samsung or whatever they do. They don't have kids. And I think the constant mm. opening and closing and cooling and uncooling and recooling I think it's part of the, pro- I think that they just, they're not real world tested is what I'm yeah, saying. Is. Yeah. I bet they don't have one in the, in the break room also. What do you think they got? What's, so that's another question. What's in the Samsung break room? Yeah. That's the question. For refrigerators at Whirlpool? I bet it's like a commercial grade Samsung. No. Oh. But inquiring minds want to know. Want to know. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, you, thank you, you for you know in, indulging my refrigerator talk, but that's going to be a podcast yeah, coming preview. up. Podcast March. preview. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Thanks until right, next baby. time. Thanks again. Later. See you.